timing to perfection. Mm. See, that was pure timing. Come on. The thing is, you just saw like uh, two different strategies there. Yeah. Where's your plan B, man? Do you not like your life? My name is Jordan Thomas, Karate World Champion, and I am here to react to MMA. Let's do this. Ooh. The way that came round, outside of the eye line, there was no way that he saw that kick coming. He didn't know reaction. People who have karate in a DNA, they're all incredible at timing and distant management. How to read your opponent, being in that matrix kind of mindset, predict what's going to happen and when he's going to move and looking for tails. I think timing and rhythm is the most important thing in karate. Here we go. That is timing to perfection. On the way in and you're getting lashed by a kick. That's timing, that's karate. I like MMA. I've always enjoyed watching it because it's about who style beats what style. It's interesting to see who dominates. I'm doing Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, I'm doing a bit of catch wrestling. We train that for karate as well because it helps us in the clinch, it helps us with the takedowns and also just to kind of get a different fundamental base. The way he goes in and out, he puts himself there and then takes it away, relentless. And the spins, he dominates the center, comes back into that danger zone, makes him miss, takes away his confidence, uses the front leg to take the ground, forces him back with the impact. He's obviously developed his understanding of the fight game, the overwhelming with the combination of the kicks, which forces him back even more, especially the power that was going into them. When it is the time for somebody else to react, or, or like trying to mix, he's not there. He's come back, but then takes that space again. And he's like that little fly, just don't go away. I'm here, I'm here and here. I think everything is done on purpose. He's actually just doing what he does in training. And that's why he makes it look so easy. You can't be somebody else once you get into the cage. You only can do what you've done in training, what's instinctive. And even if you try and do something else in the, in the cage, you're always going to revert back to what's comfortable. For me, it's very easy to be a beginner at something. You have to kind of let go of what you know and actually have to be able to start that again. Someone shows you something, the first thing most people would do is, oh, I've never done that before, I don't know if I can. But when someone does, you know what, I'm going to have a go. And then what happens is you start understanding the way you can do it. See, there's a common denominator. He's also on the center of the ring. He's controlled that. He's taken away the confidence of that fighter. He was confident in his timing, which what does that do to your opponent? It doesn't matter like what you throw, they can either take it or make you miss and still be there. That's a dangerous fighter. You might have a preconception of a fighter and they come out completely different. Nah, you've got to come out and see what tools they have. Put your tools to the test. Someone's going to make the decision for you if you don't make the decision. Very traditional. Yeah, how he hunts down the guard as well. The hands are already there. He's in a position to, to time him out with a punch or anything like that. But I don't I haven't seen the fight. He likes to put his face on the line though. Putting his... Yeah. There was no awareness. He just kept on coming straight. Like that samurai mentality. He should have adapted because, boy, obviously he was doing something wrong. Don't keep coming forward. Where, where's your plan B? <laughs> you know? <laughs> You know what I mean? Where's your plan B, man? Do you not like your life? It was like very static, very flat on his feet, coming forward and forward and forward and forward. You can't just stand there with no, no reaction. If you can't get your body out of the way, the last thing you do is just show a little bit of head movement to take away that power. I think maybe he didn't have the right training partners leading up to that fight because if you had the right training partners, they make you pay for that, yeah. And you need people who test you in your training camp. So I work with a thing called, you know, comfort zone and danger zone. My front foot, I know for example, is already in the danger zone. My back foot is already in the comfort zone. So that danger zone, you can hit me and I can hit you. The comfort zone, yeah, I can hit you, but I've got time to react. So the adrenaline and the heart rate comes down. Oh, remember this one? Yeah, she steps up with a guard, so she's safe. She's disguised the kick. So the hand comes out and taps the hand as a distraction and then the leg comes up. See, his timing is incredible. Look how he's twitching in and out. When you watch both of them, they're, they're twitching, right? So when you keep twitching, you're keeping their mind active. They have to react because now they're thinking you're going to throw something. Oh. <laughs> yeah, yeah, let me rewind that. Oh.
he saw the gap, he saw the opportunity. That was timing. Where he creeped in, he was in distance without even him knowing. Bang. He ain't taking that body kick from that close distance. To go body, the confidence has to be quite high. If the timing's off, you're quite open, you're exposing yourself, you know, you have to throw it with confidence, conviction, the right time and in a safe manner. Not a lot of people can do that. Mm. See, that was pure timing, come on. A lot of people will say they're just standing there, but look at Machida's body language. He's still moving, he's still searching. He wants to see that, you know, certain reactions. He wants to see how you're gonna to react to certain things and what's open. And then when the right timing comes, so he leans back, his knee comes up, and then he extends the leg. Hips him with the balls of his toes. That's pure karate, that. It's one of those techniques that actually is quite safe because it was quite a, it was from distance. Remember, your legs are longer than your arms. He had no reaction to that knee lift. He could have met that. He could have closed the distance. He could have came out. He tried to block it. What is he doing? Yeah, that's why, because he thought it was, it was to the body. That's why. Yeah, wrong reaction. <laughs> and that's the consequence, right? It's actually to cover the chamber of the kick. So when the knee comes up, the hand is actually there to stop that kick coming up. Obviously, as a karate, you've got your hands up uh, to be able to cover here, 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 and here. And in boxing, you've got the same. In boxing, you can roll a punch. Same thing in Taekwondo. You can actually roll with the shoulder and, and roll the kick. If you have your hand a bit out and you're ready to meet somebody and you know they're a kicker, you can stop that kick coming in and clash them in the middle of the chest. Woo! See, you're reacting with the, with the back leg and you're coming up with the front leg. That's a combination. It's like throwing your hands. He's using his legs like it's his hands. That's a different level. Some people just don't know how to react to that or, or have just never seen it or hasn't got the partners to even replicate that. I remember when I first went into Taekwondo and I had all these kicks coming at me, I was getting headshots after headshots after headshots because I've just never seen some of the kicks that they were throwing. But when I started to see it, then I can start forming a reaction to it. The kick endurance from Taekwondo is absolutely crazy. It's full contact as well, which I absolutely love. I really just wanted to add something else to me. It was my wife who said, do you think you can do Taekwondo? And I said, yeah. She said, oh good, I've signed you up. <laughs> You're fighting next week. I came in, I trialed, I fought, uh, I think it was a world champion kickboxer. So they put up the world karate champion against it was for their own entertainment you know it was like you know what i mean it was definitely for their own entertainment okay they're both on their toes nice nice drew him in he threw out like a fake job he he went back he took it away and then he finds his right timing so he takes it away goes in and out taps the guard he taps the guard that's a tell. When he tapped the guard, he took it away. But he didn't go back into stance. He didn't get back into ready position quick enough. And the fact that he recognized that straight away, this is my time, this is my chance. And he realized that in a split second. Spin kick, nice. Thing is, you just saw like uh, two different strategies there. On the way in, he's countering. So to counter somebody on the way in is, is very difficult. He just had his time and he had his eye in, he, had, he was locked in on his rhythm. And then he switches on the attack. And then the diversity of techniques. You don't know what's coming. A karate hottie. Okay. Ooh. When you throw something unusual and something that somebody hasn't even seen or it's hard to read, why not go to a karate class? Why not bring in what she, where she's trained and what she's done. What, what's her fundamentals? When I've trained, you know, I used to play football. I used to play basketball. I've trained with sprinters. I've brought that into my training and I've brought that into my fight. Diversity in your training is very, very important. And if you're training for something, I think you need to understand your opponent. I think that's the first step. In karate, we have ki. Uh, you might know it as chi. <laughs> um, and it's actually been able to control that inner self. For me, that was, that's, that was the first step to kind of being mindful, is being open to it. You know, how do you react in a high pressure situation? Can you control your breathing? Are you aware of your heart rate? 
to be able to waste no mental energy. You need this just before the fight. You need this in between the rounds. So you don't want to be in that adrenaline state that whole time, wasting any mental energy. You want to be in that quiet space. Everybody has high pressures in their own life and whatever journey they are, wherever this, the path seems impossible. I think mindfulness is very, very important uh, during life. And I think that reflects on your performance because if you don't get you right, then you won't get that right. You know, that's the most important thing. When somebody talks to me about success, the first thing is I say, how are you? Let's, let's build from there. That is the starting blocks.